Did you know that you can buy leaf bug eggs on eBay? Well, turns out you can. So I did. <laughs> I bought 25 eggs for $16. So let me show you how I raised them from eggs all the way to one year. So they're relatively low maintenance. There are some things you have to keep in mind when they're young. When they're young, they're called nymphs. So first of all, what do they eat? They eat bramble, rose, hazel, blackberry, and oak leaves. This might vary slightly depending on your leaf bug's species. Mine in particular is Philip, Philip, Philip something. You don't have to give them any water because they drink water from the fine mists on the leaves. So this is what the eggs look like when I first received it. It came with a little cotton thing to keep it dry. This is what they look like before I sprayed them. You can see the outer edges are kind of smooth. I laid down a paper towel in a little glass jar just to keep the humidity up. I have two jars because I gave one to a coworker. Gave it a couple spritzes of water, covered it with a saran wrap, again, just to keep the humidity in and poke some holes so that it doesn't get too moldy. So once in a while, I would switch out the paper towels. I would spritz it with uh, just some water. Make sure the mist is really fine. They can drown in a drop of water. Their bodies are so small that they can't break the surface tension of a drop of water. So I just kept doing that, spritzing it every day or two, just whenever it looked kind of dry. Then all of a sudden, oh my God. Okay, so they finally hatched. I can't believe it. Here's a, uh, not focusing. Yeah, okay. So there's the first one that was born. Its name is Muchacho. And just now another one is born. This little puppy's name is gonna be Jorts, but what's really cool is you can see, you can see where they came out of the egg. It's like a bottle that's opened its cap and like a body that size fit in an egg that big. It's insane. I'm excited, I can't believe it because these eggs have not changed shape or size for the past five months. They gave me no indication that they're alive and all of a sudden, boom, they're born. And I, I'm just, I'm just really excited. So once they hatched, I decided to move them to a bigger area so that they have more space to walk around and molt and be happy if they feel emotions. <laughs> their enclosure needs to be at least three times the length of their bodies in order for them to molt properly, which is shedding their skin, which they do every time they grow bigger. So paper towel is one of the best things to line your enclosure because it's easy to change out. Also, because it's white, you can see if they've laid any eggs. But some people also use coconut fiber. Um, also, gotta keep in mind, don't put stick bugs and leaf bugs in the same enclosure because leaf bugs are so convincing that the stick bugs will eat them. <laughs> so, when they're first born, they're called nymphs. And at this stage, they're very fragile. So, expect some of them to die. You're not gonna be a perfect parent, but that's normal. It's okay your babies can die. Also, when they're born, they're black, and as they grow, they turn more green with each molt. It was also kind of interesting how they have different personalities. Some of them like to climb as high as possible onto the top of the container, and some prefer to stay underneath leaves. Some like to climb your hand, some don't. Kind of fascinating. And when they're nymphs, they actually can't eat from undamaged leaves. So you have to rip off little pieces off the leaves so that they can get to it. Um, I fed them some bramble and hazel leaves. They seem to prefer the bramble. Also, when they're at the stage as a nymph, they tend to need more humidity than adults. So make sure to keep that place nice and moist. Also, another thing, try to give them leaves that are matured, so not the neon green little budding new leaves because those are toxic to nymphs. Oh, and the little circular pieces out of the leaves is the parts that the leaf bug ate out of. Make sure there's no temperature fluctuations. If it's in your bedroom and you tend to turn your heat on and off, uh, your bugs are gonna have a bad time. Make sure there are no other bugs in the enclosure. If you get your leaves from outside, once in a while there will be spiders. And I don't know who would win in a fight, a spider or a leaf bug, but I'm pretty sure the leaf bug is gonna die in this situation. Um, so I had like 13 eggs to start with, and I think 
about half of them hatched. Um, I was a, I'm a first time leaf parent, so I, they freaking all died. Okay, they died and I felt bad about it, but one survived. And so, yay, it doesn't have a name because I kept expecting it to die at any point, but somehow she kept on living. Oh, and here's my little bug eating her own molt. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. Good nutrients. You gotta eat your skin, you know? Oh, the way to tell whether or not it's a male or a female is a bit harder when they're young, but as they get older, they change a bit. So females tend to be bigger and they also have shorter antenna. Also, when they become adults, the females cannot fly and the males can. This is so that the male can travel distances to find mates. I mean, so it was just months and months of the same thing. Uh, she was molting slowly. Nothing much going on. I just kept switching out her leaves whenever they looked kind of dry. And then all of a sudden... Holy shit, I don't know what the frick happened, but this dude changed overnight. Like, what? It looks completely different. I thought it was a female, but this is clearly a male. It's got wings and longer antennas. Literally like yesterday or the day before, it looked like a female. What the frick? Does this mean that it's not going to lay eggs for me? God damn it. It also means it's a flight risk. What? Freaking plot twist. So it seems that the cycle ends here then. It's just going to be a male. No more eggs. And that's it. Great. Thanks for being a male. We're here. It is September 2020, which means it's been July, August, 14 months. It's been 14 months that I've somehow managed to keep this little guy alive. Using his little antennas to sniff around, see what's going on in the environment. So cool. So sorry I ripped off your leg. He moves really fast sometimes. He's kind of slow right now, but it happened when I put him, I put some new leaves in his cage. I was putting the lid on and he just, oh, I feel like he's got, don't fly, don't fly. The little dance that they do that you've seen earlier in the video is to mimic the movement of wind on leaves. So they're trying to look like leaves that are blowing in the wind for camouflage protection against predators. He's waving to the camera, say hello. Hello. Get that arm. <laughs> All right. <sighs> what do you think? Odie has tried to kill this guy many times. He sees him in the cage. He swats at him all the time. Sad thing is the story ends here. He's not gonna lay any more eggs for me. I'm probably not gonna buy more just because I don't know. See, if it were female, I could have sold its eggs. I'm sure the laws vary depending on where you live, but where I live, it's legal to sell the eggs, but it's illegal to sell live uh, nymphs or adults. If you get caught selling the, <laughs> the live nymph or the adult, you get charged, I think it's up to 30 grand for it. So. I was hoping that I'd have, I'd be able to like make a farm of these guys, have a bunch of females and males and be able to sell the eggs for a profit. It seems like it'd be something fun to do, get a little extra income, but no, all I have is one measly male. <laughs> so once this guy dies, that's the end of the story. Yeah. So. Did you like the video? 